As it turns out, we're only getting started with shuffling the deck. Things are going to get more complicated from here. So let's take a break and break down some of the formulas that have been used so far. Reading a formula is different than reading standard English. In English, we read left to right, top to bottom. And when we're reading that, we have an idea in our head of the sequence of events. A quick brown fox jumps over a lazy dog in that order. That's how we imagine things. In math, we read in a certain way as well. Brian has 10 stickers. He gives four to Danny. How many stickers does Brian have left? I can model what's going on in a number sentence. 10 minus 4 is something. I could also model things in how I solve it. 10 minus 4 is something. The first kind of sentence is called a semantic number sentence. It makes more sense to describe what's going on in a problem in the order that information is presented to us. The second sentence is the computational sentence. It's how we decided that we'd like to solve the problem. In this case, we use subtraction. In the second problem, it says, Brian has four stickers. How many more stickers would Brian need to buy to have 10 stickers altogether? The numbers in this problem are going to be similar, but let's take a look at what happens when you write out number sentences. The semantic number sentence would start with four, add an unknown, and arrive at 10. The computational number sentence is going to be solved the same way as the top one. You have a total. You would like to deduct the unknown quantity, 4, and arrive at 6. Even though both math problems are solved with the same computational sentence, they have different semantic number sentences based on the way that information is presented. A student who understands the conventions of reading in a particular subject area has less of a cognitive load, so they can devote more resources to other tasks. So let's figure out how to read these formulas. If you're just starting, I want you to know that functions are just verbs. What actions are you performing inside an app? Each function, like clear, is going to be taking an argument. What do you want to clear? You can think of it like an object of a verb in English. But things get complicated when you have one function and another. So follow these steps. Start by reading the innermost function and read outward. The second formula means shuffle the cards. Then collect the shuffled cards into cards played. If you recall, these were the first formulas we used in our app. But things got more complicated than that. Here's the latest formulas that we have. I've written it in two ways. The top one does not have formatting. The bottom one, I've spaced things out to understand it better. Just to make a point as to why you should space out your formulas, I'll read the top one. Filter the cards where the ID number has not already been played. Shuffle your filter. Select the first card in your shuffle and place it into cards played. Not bad, but you'll see that if you space out your formula, with one function on each line, that the conventions of reading from inside to outside are much more apparent. What does all of this mean? Well, Microsoft Power Apps has a lot of advantages over other low-code solutions. It begins with the coding language. First, Microsoft Power Apps uses Microsoft Excel language. This means all of your knowledge for Microsoft Excel will transfer to Microsoft Power Apps. Second, I mentioned earlier about semantics. The structure of a formula in Power Apps lends to the meaning of the overall formula. It might not be read left to right, top to bottom, but there is a definite direction in which you can read. And that's what makes it a more semantic language. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to find the next step in creating your own solitaire app.